Hello folks, it's George Leoniak and welcome to New Geometry. Today I am bringing you a video about the two treasures. This was a quote from Johannes Kepler about the two treasures. One, the uh, three, four, five triangle, Pythagoras triangle, as well as the golden ratio. So I wanna talk about some constructions related to that combine the two together into a single image. So I'm gonna walk through a presentation here and show you some of these um, awesome new treasures. So let me just share the screen. Now the inspiration for this video came through a series of Facebook posts uh, on my page and over at New Geometry, New Geometers Facebook group. So you could check those out. And uh, here is the quote that I just mentioned. Geometry has two great treasures. One is the theorem of Pythagoras. The other, the division of a line into extreme and mean ratio. The first we may compare to a measure of gold. The second we may name a precious jewel, Johannes Kepler. And as I was saying, the inspiration for looking at this relationship more closely came from uh, Joe, Joe Dubbs down here. And uh, he showed me this diagram and the inspiration he had for the diagram came from Francesco Martinez. And this is from 2019, his diagram showing where the golden ratio shows up. I'll have some close-ups of these images a little bit later with some new constructions to show you how you can create this easily on your own, even though it looks quite complex, um, with hand-drawn techniques, compass and straight edge. So there's a golden ratio segment down in here and uh, Francesco places the circle in the middle and he's making a relationship here to the unit one circle that is within inside the three, four, five triangle. Now, Joe Dubbs is also making a relationship between the true value of pi or what some people believe the true value of pi is, is 3.144 rather than 3.141. Um, but this diagram, um, I don't believe will give you that information precisely, but it's an interesting way to look at it. Okay, so that's some inspiration and some background for where some of these um, diagrams that I'll be showing you uh, relate to. So the uh, first great treasure, this was actually a diagram that I did, I posted on Facebook. Uh, maybe a year, year or so ago, because I thought it was just one of the most awesome ways to show a three, four, five triangle using compass and straight edge techniques to do it, basically by creating twofold symmetry. And you see the circle layout. But the beautiful thing about the diagram here is that the circles themselves actually divide the segments, as you can see, they're marked red and blue as we go along here, they provide the precise locations to create your uh, three edge, uh, for three units here, four units and five units. As we go around in the center point, we'll give you the inner circle right here, here and here, as well as the large circle around it. And I really, when I posted this back then, I was like, boy, I would have loved to have seen this diagram in a standard textbook when I was taking geometry in high school, because it makes the uh, very, uh, very uh, visceral relationship to seeing how this plays out with being able to draw it like this. And here I did the drawing last year uh, actually did it to scale. Uh, you can see my scale here for the four inches. And it was quite fun to do to see it actually creating and drawing the little three, four, five triangle with the technique that I just showed you. Okay, so that is uh, one of the great treasures. Now the golden ratio can be found in a division over here. And that was so when I, when I saw that, I was like, okay, well, let me find out if there's an, 
technique, a new technique, right? K and W technique of working with the geometry the way that I like to, um, you know, in an open exploratory type of way, just seeing what might show up. And here's a nice little simple construction that I think really rather simplifies the technique here. And most of this comes from understanding the relationship to the larger circle templates. As I, as I just showed you previously here, that the circle template is what is actually providing all the unit lengths here as it's the circles that are dividing the edges of the lines. And if you've seen any of my other videos of working with the golden ratio, you know, and doing the drawings of the do poly polyhedra, dodecahedron, icosahedron, all, many of the drawings I share, it's usually that the circles are interacting with the lines and ways to divide the lines at those precise locations. So that's why it's always important to include the whole circles in your diagrams. I mean, you might, if you're, if you're doing it for artistic sense, you can, you know, take out some circles here and there and lines, but for, looking for the connections between things is usually keeping the circles rather than just making little slash marks here and there is usually important to show you the missing information. Okay, well, here's this quick diagram and here I have the line. It actually gives me the precise location to now divide the remainder of this section length of line here into the golden ratio, the red and the blue segments here. And I like that. I thought it was cool. Um, I found this, uh, actually, I, I decided to do this after the new way to do this, to find the golden treasure, because I found a way, which I'll show you in the next slide, that just blew me away. I've never seen it anywhere before. And to me, it feels like an ultimate discovery for um, making the relationship between the golden ratio and the three, four, five triangles. We're gonna get two treasures in one in a super simple way in the same diagram that I just showed you using this large kind of triangle technique. This creates the golden ratio and this is all to scale. So we've got our uh, unit one radius circle in the in inside. And in our diagram here, if you notice, I've got a line that's going from G uh, going through M all the way down, right? It's the diagonal of the uh, the square that would be here, right? The four petal tips of this clover shape. Well, as soon as I send that down through here, that divides this segment, right? Which we know is one, right? Because this is one, two, three, four. It divides it at 0.5. So right in the middle. Well, I said, well, how about if I take a circle and just make it between the half of the length there? And well, that gives me, you know, 0.0 here. Okay, I'll make a circle here on the, in the middle of my diagram. And what do you know? That circle is 0 0.61803. That's a golden ratio radius in relationship. That's dividing the line into the extreme and mean point. There's our treasure at the center of our diagram in the circle, the red circle there in the blue circle, demonstrating 1 to 0.618. What a beautiful diagram. And I was so excited about it, you know, to also realize as you just draw in the other diagonal, well, that diagonal does the same thing here. And notice it's right at the same points where it's already being divided by the large clover circle, right? This vesica right here. So right there and there, you got your line, you got your midpoint on the five, that's the, the hypotenuse. Go ahead, make your circle, touches the inner circle. Good, on the four unit, right? Divide this uh, length right here, boom, another one. Oh, right here, okay, we got it again. Completely around the whole diagram, every single point where the two cross diagonals of the square cross, here it is at the midpoint of the uh, unit five, so we have 2.5 on either side, that's a, uh, half a radius, it goes ahead, we get 0.618 on the inside of the circle of the unit one radius. Super simple, huh? And uh, 
So this is, uh, here it is, uh, his quote again, Kepler's quote. And this is an example of something that will always be true, right? So any time you take a midpoint on the hypotenuse and you have it divided into uh, fifths, right? One, two, three, four, five, 2.5 on either side here. Go ahead and make a circle. When you do that, you will create a golden ratio circle 0 0.618 inside the unit one circle with inside the three, four, five triangle. That's like a eternal truth. That's an example of what sacred geometry. And being a teacher of sacred geometry and teaching people new techniques and ways of relating to it, I am often asked, what is sacred geometry? Why is it considered sacred? Well, this is, an, this is a reason why it would be considered sacred is that this will always be true. This is like an eternal truth. You make a three, four, five triangle, you find this midpoint on the, the unit five length, the hypotenuse, go ahead and make your circle of the unit one, uh, half an inch radius. That will always divide this line from the center to that midpoint will always be divided at that location, giving you 0 0.618 with inside in relationship to the unit one. You could see it's really half of a um, root five, uh, you know, the double stack square relationship that we really, we usually see. Um, so this would be one, this is 0.5. So this would be half the length of square root of uh, five at that point. So, you know, it's simply right there, but I guess, I don't know, it took a while for me to realize it. Maybe it's common knowledge, I'm not sure, but I think the thing that is uh, the most compelling part of this is the circle templates, right? This is something you're able to do on your own to make this connection and realization. And what a great thing for kids to be able to know to actually discover both the three, four, five triangle and the golden ratio all in one in a very simple hand-drawn technique that's very applicable in any type of class, type of setting um, for, for kids, adults, whoever it is to make the connection. But just elaborating on this a little bit more, there are other ways to find the great treasures. And I like to call it with new geometry because that's the way I explore this by continuing to uh, explore it in an open-ended way and allowing the geometry on the page to reveal these discoveries to me as you develop a relationship with these patterns that are, um, across different perspectives and views from the different orthogonal perspectives, all united between these deep truths that are connected between all of them. But here's the same diagram. I mean, the same concept, the same, uh, the same three, four, five relationship with the golden ratio circles. I have the red and blue here indicating that in these circles on the inside. And this is showing how something that will always be true, even if you change the circle template, will always demonstrate that same truth. So here it is in this three, four, five triangle, uh, with same midpoints or midpoint on the hypotenuse. Also, we have the uh, point here at dividing that unit in unit one, this unit one, we've got that there. And now we have one in a vesica. And then here's the method I already showed you. Here's another kind of vesic construction that I was really excited to find because I wanted to make it in the starting circle within in the, in the drawing of the setup. If you do your vesica, I wanted to put the three, four, five triangle inside the star inside the circle that's created in the vesica. So that was a fun one to explore. It's a kind of variation of, of this one here. So. Here's just a little bit of uh, new art with it, you know, showing off some colors and also put the pentagon and pentagram on the inside of the golden ratio circles. And I really like this 
representation of it. I mean, it is very cool that you can extend the line out to pick up the golden ratio segment over here, as I showed you in my first example, which is similar to the way that Francesco and Joe Dubbs were showing. And I've also found another research paper online that showed that same technique. So I, I did look around to see if I could find anybody that showed this technique. And I think it was really, if, if no one else has seen this, it probably was just born from working with the circle template. And I think a lot of modern geometry that you see out there that's become more reliant on computer generation rather than, you know, if you play, I want a three, four, five triangle, ah, I'll just plug it in and I don't have to do any circles anymore. But you see, the circles are what are going to continue to expand your relationship to make the connections that you won't see otherwise. You take away all these circles, you're with the very bland geometry at that point that 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 kind of removes one half of the one half of the equation of you know you got your lines but you have no circles anymore and when you're doing sacred geometry and the way i teach it with new geometry you're connecting with the circles and the lines together and you're seeing how those interactions are going to create a beautiful little diagram like this and now you'll know how to create a pentagon easily right you'll know how to create this pentagon easily because you know that all you need to do is make use your golden ratio circles to get the right locations. And that I did in little slash marks. <laughs> so, but, you know, once you know what you're doing with the, 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 the patterns, you have a vast range of, um, of tools to work with. And that's what new geometry provides. Now, my favorite uh, drawing of all this was to me really like finding a great treasure because I really wanted to, um, I've always wanted to find a very simple way to create the actual uh, area of each of the three, four, five um, edges by extending the squares off of them to actually show me the actual kind of equation, right? The uh, three squared, four squared, five squared, right? So we got nine circles, 16 and the uh, to 25 in, in that square. So of course, that's really showing you the, the equation of the Pythagorean theorem, right? So if you just have the triangle by itself, it's even more conceptual trying to understand how that relates to the area of the squares that come off it. And this was um, a very cool technique of how to do that, easily done to pick up the corners of the squares. And this I'm going to be teaching in my next Patreon session coming up on uh, this coming Friday, which is May 10th, 2024. So um, this was, like I said, a short video. Hopefully uh, you found it uh, awesome and inspirational and cool to see this uh, relationship that shows up in the golden ratio relationship to the three, four, five triangle. And I think it's just super awesome to find the treasures nested inside the center circle of the Pythagorean uh, triangle here, where you have the three golden ratio circles that show up in this technique that I'm showing here, which is really the heart of a foundational skill that I teach at New Geometry with the golden ratio circles. Just about any video you, you've probably seen within the past three years of mine has probably discussed the golden ratio circles. All right, so um, thanks for joining me on this video. Here's the uh, the drawing, um, all done to fit on the uh, standard drawing pad paper. So uh, go ahead, check out the Patreon, check out new geometry courses. I know it may be last minute for you, but I do have an apprenticeship starting tomorrow which is going to be the 6th of May, 2024. And uh, if you're coming to this video late, check out newgeometrycourses.com. Uh, over there, there's a wide array of courses to get started doing new geometry and exploring these techniques. And check out the New Geometers Facebook group, where there's a great bunch of geometers on there sharing a wide range of uh, inspirational work that they're coming up with there too. 
All right. Thanks so much and have an awesome day. Much love and appreciation. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.